Kevin, in a minute or two, can you uh, explain for us the difference between justification and sanctification? I'll try. Uh, justification is a legal act. It's a, it's a declaration that we have been made right with God by faith alone, in the finished work of Christ alone, through no effort or part or works of our own. So it is a, it is a once for all declaration that we are not only acceptable in God's sight, but that we are perfectly righteous in his sight. Mm -hmm. So that Christ died the death we deserved, he lived the life that we couldn't live, and through this great exchange then, we appropriate, appropriate that by faith. And we're joined to Christ so that we then share in all of these benefits and justification is chief among them. So we don't, it's, it's finished, it's final, it's unalterable, we don't contribute to it in any way. You have sanctification as a theological category. Of course, the biblical scholars and theologians would be quick to say, well, actually in the New Testament, the language of holiness or sanctification or sanctify is often used kind of like justification as a positional setting apart in Christ. But there are other times that use it in the more traditional, we think of theological sense as a progressive growing in holiness. So whereas sanctification does not uh, have degrees, your, your, or justification rather, you're, you're justified or you're not, sanctification allows for variation, allows for progress. It's still the work of God in us mm -hmm. to make us what he has already declared us to be. So did you say justification is all of grace and sanctification is all of grace? They are all of grace, yes, absolutely. They are all of grace. They are, as, as Calvin famously said, the, the duplex gratia, the double grace that both come from Christ. Now the way in which we receive them are different so that we receive this grace of justification uh, passively, as it were, through faith, and we receive this grace of sanctification actively so that many, many theologians, do, do, fine Reformed theologians have not had a problem using languages of cooperating or participating with or uh, John Piper, I act the miracle of sanctification. So it's God's miracle in us and at the same time he's calling us to act it out, mm -hmm. which is different than with justification. It is, yeah. So for those of us who, who love justification, we, we treasure it. It's a doctrine that's we all super should. precious. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Is there, a, in, in a sense, in, in our treasuring of justification that we lose sight of the, the fact that Christ is our moral example, that Christ does set a pattern of holiness that we can look to, to see what holiness should look like? Yeah. You know, the, these things you get these pendulum swings, and, and understandably, we are jealous, rightfully so, to guard the doctrine of justification. It is the doctrine on which the church stands or falls. And because so many Christians and churches can misfire on justification, we really want to hold that tightly and make sure people realize you don't contribute to it in any way. And, God's grace is not only the grace that saves a wretch like me, but it's the grace that leads us home. And so Christ is a multifaceted Savior. And so absolutely, I mean, there's time and time again in Scripture where we're told to look to God as our example, look to Christ as our example. So there, there's, there's nothing you know, moralistic about that, provided we realize he's so much more than that. Yes. And, the only way we can begin to live in his example is when we live in union with him. So you need to get the theological groundwork, but then, oh yes and amen, look to Christ for all that we ought to be and all that godliness is. I love how you talk about this on page 47. You come to the end of the chapter and you say, if somewhere down the road you forget the Ten Commandments or you can't recall the fruit of the Spirit, or don't seem to remember any particular attributes of God, you can still remember what holiness is by simply remembering his name. So in, in that quote, are you getting at this idea that we, we can make holiness too complicated? And that is, 
it's just looking at Christ and looking how he deals with situations, his attitudes, his, his heart, his love for people. Um, is that too reductionistic? Um, what are you getting at in, the, in that paragraph? Yeah, that, that's, I don't think it's reductionistic. Of course, we can make anything reductionistic. Augustine famously said, unless someone's going to prove he didn't actually say this to me, but, you know, love God and do what you want. And, of course, that's good advice, provided you fill up the love God with a lot of content. And, you know, so you need appropriate nuances. If you look to Christ, you need to understand he had a unique messianic identity that we don't have. But, wow, we are really going to impoverish the Christian life and, and separate sanctification from Christ if we don't hold out that Christ is our example. And this is where maybe holiness becomes drudgery, it becomes disconnected from the larger themes of the gospel because we haven't connected it to Christ. And you're right that in those times when it becomes so confusing, I remember these things and these things and these things and all these principles and all these proverbs and we ought to do that and hide God's word in our heart. And at the same time, to know Jesus intimately, just like anyone who has, who has had a really wonderful mother or father or a tremendous example as a pastor or coach, you, you don't you know, you know, sit there and just think, how can I, I gotta be like them. Maybe you do and that's oppressive, but I think in a healthy way, many of us have that person so engraven on our heart, they have so indelibly stamped our souls we think, oh, if only I could be like dad, or what, what, would, what would my pastor, what would my mentor have done? How would he look at that? that? I think that's profoundly healthy, and how much more so when it's with, with the only human being who ever perfectly lived. Mm-hmm.